enter a world stranger than you have ever imagined. The world of witchcraft, magic, and ritual. This is a journey back to the roots of paganism, to mystical belief and superstition. A timely journey, because there is an occult explosion taking place in the Western world. In nomine Satanas, Lucifer excels his day. Hail Satan. Hail Satan. prepared to change your mind about the occult. It was in the primitive tribal world that man first learned to summon the ancestral gods and goddesses, to call on forces higher and more powerful than himself. The search for supernatural powers continues, in spite of science and technology. In the heart of downtown New York, even today, occultists call on the old gods. Why, you may ask, in a modern and supposedly enlightened world, should there be a hankering for these strange and to some frightening beliefs? People are looking for the old earth traditions, the traditions that in some senses their ancestors had. You know, there's an old joke that um, if you go far enough back, everyone's ancestors were pagans. And it's true. It really is true. And uh, so in some senses, you can see this movement as an attempt to go back and take out the juice, take the folk traditions, the dances, the songs. Nobody does that anymore. With the waters of life, do I consecrate this sacred grove. Modern witchcraft draws heavily on ancient Celtic traditions of nature worship. Whether in the country or the city, its rituals follow the cycle of the seasons. <laughs> All hell be to thee, mighty ones of the north. You're at lords within the realm of the horned one, shining bright and swift as a stag. Join the children of Arian Rod. Witchcraft is known to its followers as Wicca, the craft of the wise. Members meet in small groups called covens. They are led by a high priestess who represents Mother Nature and the goddess of the moon. All hail be to thee, mighty ones of the south. You are at lords within the realm of the serpent. So mote it be. So mote it be. Happy seven, everyone. Most religions totally forbid any involvement with witchcraft. Considered evil and demonic and linked to Satanism, witches were accused of worshipping the devil. 
until quite recent times to be a witch was to be condemned to burn in hell. If the devil lives anywhere, it could be in San Francisco. From our point of view, it really makes no difference whether you pray to a father god or to a mother goddess or to an entire gaggle of gods and goddesses. You're still wishing the same thing. You're still wishing to be included. You're still wishing for their acceptance. You're waiting for them to put their arm or arms around you and say, you belong, you are a part of us, you can relax, we will take care of you. We approve of you, we endorse you. The Satanist, the black magician, does not seek that kind of submergence of the self. We do not seek to have our decisions and our morality approved or validated by any higher God or being. We take responsibility unto ourselves. The Temple of Set follows the ancient Egyptian Prince of Darkness, Satan, in another guise. It's America's only legal satanic church and enjoys tax-free status. Lilith Sinclair and temple director Michael Aquino edit the satanic newsletter. It has a circulation of 75. Basically, Christians, as well as many other religions, and even a lot of the occult groups are around, uh, are afraid of us. We threaten them, uh, not physically, but our existence and our philosophy threatens their security because we pose questions that they don't want to face and that they don't have answers for. The Temple of Set emerged from the Church of Satan, founded in the mid-60s by Anton LaVey, a one-time lion tamer and carnival performer, and the Church of Satan's self-appointed magus. Satan! Lucifer, in the name of our most exalted God, Satan, Lucifer, I command thee to come forth. Shemham Parash. Shemham Parash. Hail, Satan. Hail, Satan. A friend and companion of the night, Thou who rejoicest in the bang of dogs and spilt blood, look favorably on our sacrifices. Open wide the gates of hell and come forth. Shemham Farash. Shemham Farash. Hail Satan. Well, it had occurred to me for many, many years that there was a uh, large grave area between psychiatry and religion that uh, was untapped and no religion had ever been based on man's carnal needs or his fleshly pursuits. All religions are based on abstinence rather than indulgence. And all religions, therefore, have to be based on fear. Well, we don't feel that fear is necessary to base a religion on. <clears throat> the fact that religions for thousands of years have been uh, telling people what they should do and what they shouldn't do according to the basic whims of a person who might be running the show is very understandable. We're realists, we Satanists, but we also feel that a person has to be good to themselves before they can be good to other people. This is a very selfish religion. We believe in greed, we believe in selfishness, we believe in all of the lustful thoughts that motivate man because this is man's natural uh, feeling. I decided that I liked Anton LaVey. He was a pleasant man. He believed in what he was doing, and underneath his uh, somewhat Mardi Gras exterior, I sensed that there was an individual who uh, did in fact have a new perspective on the human equation, on what humanity is. The Temple of Set is the Church of Satan grown up. Uh, the Church of Satan started out on a very uh, self-indulgent, materialistic level. At the time, this was uh, the way it was presented, that there was nothing more than that. The nude female figure was used as a living altar, uh, was a symbol of carnality, of the ties to the flesh. And the, the sexual content was really beside the point. I have been an altar several times. 
I don't function that way at this time because the Temple of Set simply doesn't use living altars. Uh, they're not ruled out. We simply haven't had occasion to use it. Um, it was quite an experience. It was one that uh, I felt honored by and that I enjoyed quite a bit. On this altar is uh, one of a number of daggers, which we may use in our rituals. This one happened to belong to the commanding general of the most elite unit of Germany's infamous SS, which was concerned with black magic and occultism research in general. Anything that it could find that had to do with the uh, origins of the human race, destiny of humanity. The perverted view of the occult held by Heinrich Himmler was of an evil magic that could help create a new master race. Wevelsburg Castle is where he performed his ceremonies. I have been to the Wevelsburg, which still preserves Heinrich Himmler's ritual chambers to this day, and have conducted a black magical ritual in the so-called Hall of the Dead beneath the Wevelsburg. This particular dagger is inscribed to our comrade in the Leibstandarte Theodor Wisch, Brigadefuhrer, a major general in the Waffen SS. And on its blade, it bears the inscription, Mein Era Heist Troy, or My Honor Shall Be Known by My Faithfulness. Now, if a Christian said to you you were just really worshipping yourself, what would you say? In a sense, they would be right. Uh, it is a form of self worship. The only thing that keeps it from being totally that is that there is this sentient being which is the Prince of Darkness or Set or Satan on a more primitive level. Uh, but it is a relationship of mutual respect rather than worship in the popular sense of the word. Uh, yes, we regard ourselves very highly because we feel we are superior beings in, in a sense that we're not just little robots going around punching our time clocks, getting up, going to sleep, and that's our existence. There's much more to it than that, and we feel that we are gaining the knowledge of that deeper universe. Anybody who attempts to explore Satanism needs to be strongly advised against it. Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. The very nature of Satan is such that he is a liar and that he endeavors to uh, convey something which is not true. And I think people who are, who are deceived into being caught up in that are placing themselves in a very dangerous position. And my strong advice would be cut with it immediately. Not all witchcraft is dark spells and evil forces. More typical of modern Wicca is Selena Fox, in America's Midwest, she embraces people with white magic. A lot of people really confuse witchcraft or Wicca, um, pagan religions, with devil worship. They feel that it's evil, that we're harming people, um, that we're putting spells over people without, you know, consulting them. And we're really not coming from that space at all. Most people who get to know us realize what we're doing is a very positive thing, that we're working with the energies of the earth, that we're very much tuned into a love consciousness, that we're seeking to do those kinds of things that religions all around the world have at their very essence, which is working with healing, working with love, working with achieving an inner balance and an inner communion with the divine. ritual that we are doing is being held on a mound, a sacred mound, which we believe was used by Native American peoples here thousands of years. We decided we would reactivate it as a sacred place. So this ceremony is for dedicating the mound as an earth healing temple.
In this sacred circle, there is unity, there is love. We are one with each other and with the earth, the spirit of this place. So mote it be. So mote it be. We consecrate this place as a sacred place of healing. We are part of a whole. We are part of all of Mother Earth, and it's important to see that and to work in harmony with the other life forms. And by putting that thought there, if enough people held that image in their mind, real magic would start happening on the planet. People would start treating each other differently. They would start not only treating other humans differently, but plants and animals and the ground that we walk on, the air that we breathe, the water that we drink, Magic is real, and I don't see it as supernatural, but very much natural. We call the spirits of North from the home of the northern winds and spectacular lights. Bless this sacred space with your gifts of ground. We call the spirits of West land of the setting sun, of the moon and the oceans, of the waters within our minds and our bodies. Spirit of South, Bring us intuition arise in us, for this consecrate this temple of the earth. We to the sky mother Earth, father sky we call the spirit of center of center the earth the sky the planet the heavens and stars we call to spirit to bless us and our working so much it be. A few months ago, um, a national Catholic newspaper interviewed me. And the first thing I said to them was Jesus Christ was a witch. And it talked about how the path of Wicca and its love consciousness is real similar to what Christ was espousing. The golden rule we have is worded a bit differently and harm none, do what you will, but it's the same thing. No, it's loving your neighbor as yourself. More light, more love, more freedom, more joy. 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 Bexhill on Sea, a small English resort town. Alex Sanders lives here. Among occultists, he's internationally renowned as the King of the Witches. Approaching 70, he believes he can still summon magical forces, in particular, an Aztec fire spirit. Right, doesn't he doesn't it? The things that have happened over the years. It's sacrificial. Make sure it's central. In the old days, he used to throw his spears and his knives and cause fires. Get it down one further one side than the other. Oh, it's pretty well. The feathered being, the Aztec, he arrived about 12 years ago and started to manifest through me. And when he started to take over, I'm a trans medium. And the moment I put the mask on, I start to change. I don't particularly like to do it. Mm. I'm already beginning it to go. I don't know whether I can stand up. Let's check. 
changing. When the feather's gone, then I become a leader of my people, and I want to blaze a trail. I want to defend everything against evil and against wrongdoing. strange looks and many people are frightened of me. That's their fault, not mine. I've got friends among the police and I help them too. I work for the Department of Occult Investigation. And after we sniffing fields, holes in the ground to find out where bodies are buried, I help. Magic, the way that I understand it, is to do with initiation of one's own inner being. And after many struggles to have the ability to change one's consciousness at will, and that happens to me with the Aztec. I've been a magician since I was 16. Um, my grandmother died in April, and in January she gave me my second degree which involved a third for the second time, and the third is the sacred rite of sex. And she took me through that, and a few months later, she was dead. Sanders' reputation spread rapidly to America. He is important enough to have had an entire tradition named after him, Alexandrian witchcraft. So how, one may ask, does it feel to be a witch in the computer age? Being a modern contemporary witch and the world of computers. Fantastic. I'll kill the bastard who stole my computer. I was getting everything worked out astrologically on 144 cassettes. And he walked in and took it so much for magic. One of Alexander's followers was an attractive young witch, Janet Farrow. She has since become the high priestess of a coven in Ireland. Hold out your hand. Did that hurt? No. And this is another thing that is so mistaken about witchcraft, that this is really a symbol of the severity of the high priestess. There are times when you are going to suffer to learn, and when I tell you off, you jump. Well, cousin, I want the furniture moved back, I want the temple tidied up, and I want this lock cleaned, and I am going to get robed. Okay. Here we go. Fire, please, as well. It is a very difficult role to be a high priestess. You have to be everything from mother to teacher to philosopher to sometimes almost a butcher. Do you think Francis will make it as a witch? Yes, he will. He's, uh, he's very intelligent and he's sensitive to it. Janet has been a witch since she was 16 and has a strong commitment to modern paganism. She's married to the coven's high priest, Stuart, a science fiction writer. Witchcraft is very much a spiritual path for people who are interested in the true sense of the word spirit. In many ways, you can understand the Christian statement when Christ said to his divine father, basically, why me? You don't ask for it, it happens to you. And you are constantly asking that question of your divine mother and father. Why am I doing this? Why do I have to do it? And why can't I just be an ordinary person in the street? Why can I never find the holes to put those things through? Can you imagine? I tell you what, you get behind me and take my hair out. Yeah. I was just saying how cold it's going to be. Oh, I know it's going to be freezing. Francis! I think we ought to start greasing him up in a second. Yeah, I think it wouldn't be a bad idea. Are you sure this couldn't wait till summer? <laughs> I'm positive. 
The purpose of becoming a witch is to make yourself a whole human being. It's only one path amongst many. But for the person who feels drawn towards witchcraft, it is a very strict, rigorous discipline which integrates you as a total human being. I told you it was necessary to suffer to learn. You're about to suffer. Why don't you with you learn anything is a different question? I thought the object of the greasing was to reduce the suffering. Don't bet on it. <laughs> My hands are freezing. <laughs> <laughs> If there's one thing the, the craft emphasizes, it teaches men and women to be themselves, to shed the comforting image behind which they shelter. Is that cold? The ordeal is part of the process of coming to terms with yourself and finding out who yourself is. This is one of the in reasons for ritual nudity, incidentally. It is very difficult to maintain an image when you are naked. There's nothing so image-forming as clothes, so it's a great symbolic step in the direction of finding out who you are. I want you as yourself, nothing else. Exactly the way nature made you. It is the day of the winter solstice, and Francis is led away to be initiated. Like a traditional Celtic warrior, he will have to pass through the ordeal of the four elements, earth, water, air, and fire. Only if he succeeds in his quest will he be accepted as a witch. All right, Mark, take the wellies off. All right, you can be binding his ankles while I take his clothes off and tie his... Yeah. Um, tie his wrists. Mm, tie his wrists. Then we lay him down and disappear. When becoming a witch, the candidate's earthly name is replaced by a magical one. For Francis, it will be Usna, and his first ordeal is of Earth. Usna! Usna! The Earth is your mother. From her you came. To her you will return. Know this and you will pass the ordeal of earth. Your feet are free to walk upon the earth. Brave the ordeal of water. Water is the element of your heart, of love and compassion. Your lips are unbound, so you may speak what is in your heart. You must brave the ordeal of air. Air is the element of the mind, of the wild things that haunt your dreams. Your hands are free to grasp them. Finally, Musna, you must brave the ordeal of fire. Fire is the element of your will, of your courage. Your eyes are open, so you may see what you fear. Welcome to the Brotherhood of the Wise. And now, pay your homage to the representative of the great goddess. Cave me la fulchara, Husna. Accept the tokens of the Brotherhood.
As the Athami is to the male, so the cup is to the female, and conjoined, they bring blessedness. Merry meet. Merry meet. Do you believe in witchcraft and magic and all those sorts of things? No, I can't really say I do. I really don't think that witches and witchcraft exists anymore these days. What about things like witchcraft? Um, do you think um, that's an evil thing that people should stay clear of? No, I don't, not at all. I believe in witchcraft and antichrist and all that. I think witchcraft, uh, to begin with, is not Christian. It's foolish. Most people I know believe in the Antichrist and worship the devil. Really? So. <laughs> I believe that anybody that deals with horoscopes are dealing with the dark side of Satan. And Satan is very powerful and we shouldn't really get involved in that at all. They should consult the Bible if they want to know things about it. What do you think about the occult in the modern world? Oh, wonderful. Why do you think that? Oh, well, I, I don't know why I do, but I do. Nobody goes around saying, I'm a witch, I'm not a witch. I think you do know witches without knowing that they're witches. Um, <clears throat> Are they nice people? They're just ordinary people. The first witch to make headlines in Australia was Rosaline Norton. She lived in Sydney's red light district of King's Cross, and during the 1950s, she spoke out strongly about witchcraft and magic. She publicly experimented with trance techniques and led an exotic and bohemian life as an artist. Her paintings were inspired by occult visions of ancient gods. But Rosaline's art was too bizarre for the times. It tapped a deep pagan pulse, and the public at large was outraged. Rosaline Norton died in 1979, her passing largely unmourned and unnoticed. For in the years between, the practice of witchcraft had widened. For those who seek it, it is now a suburban pursuit. Tarnith is a professional fire eater. With her husband Gwydion, she heads a witchcraft group in Western Australia where witchcraft's image of evil still lingers. They keep their belief in the occult strictly private to themselves. Members are often recruited through a post office box number. Over a period of three weeks, I saw an ad for coven members in the uh, Sunday Times, so I answered one of them. And uh, the result of that was within a couple of weeks, I joined what at that stage was the only coven that was fairly public. Within a two-week period of that, I was um, recommended that I took over as high priest. Um, so I did. Within this hand fasting, when people join the coven, they are joining a family. There are responsibilities within a family, but there are an awful lot of happiness, there's a lot of joy. I would ask all here, is there any reason why this hand fasting ritual should not proceed? Well, hand fasting is a very beautiful occasion. It is, in fact, a witch's wedding. It doesn't hold, in most cases, any legal status, although if the high priest or high priestess was a civil celebrant in this country, it could, in fact, become legal. Earth and water, we purify our union. It's unusual for non-witches, I suppose, understanding hand fasting because it can last for a minimum period of a year and a day. It could last for any number of years. I've known one where one is, was made for five years. 
It's a special feeling, very sacred. Helios and I decided, in view of our youth, that for us a year and a day would be appropriate. Well, at the current time, I'm a see-through barmaid. That involves wearing see-through costumes and working around at different hotels as a barmaid. And I sometimes work private shows and buck shows as well. The ceremony that we refer to as wickening is nothing more than a craft version of the Christian christening. Very simply all it does is place them under protection of the gods and goddesses that we worship, but there is no commitment. We are met in this circle, sacred circle, to ask the blessings of the mighty god and goddess. There are many paths and each must find his own. Therefore, we do not seek to bind JJ to any one path while he is still young. It's very, very important for the child that he has his teeny weeny first brush with the gods and the goddess. I anoint the Ariel with wine in the name of the mighty goddess. Mighty Lord, bestow upon this child the gift of wisdom. Gentle goddess, bestow upon this child the gift of love. The ancient altar from nearly all faiths was the female's womb. Having her lie in a pentagram position with five red candles around her, which do represent the very strong male element, creates, if you like, a procreative field to where a doll can be born. And the doll is, is nothing more than uh, a symbolism of a human being. With the doll being made on her stomach, Again, it is symbolic of the creating of a, of a child. When the life force, if you like, is impregnated into the doll, it is then brought down, and it is symbolic that it is brought right down through the womb or over the womb. It is not uncommon for a high priestess to in fact feel birth pains. In this particular case, the doll was made of me, it was made by me, because I have a, a problem with where I had a fractured neck, and I simply wish to do some work. The reason for using x-rays is medical science has done nothing more than indicate that they are able to heal, so why shouldn't we work natural healing in alongside it? And fairly obviously the doll could be used in the more traditional voodoo or the black magic side where it could be used to harm. Uh, you could create headaches, you could kill. The same energy force, power if you like, that you use to heal, you can use to kill. Why do so many people seem to find the traditional religions and the concept of a single God not enough? What does the occult, driven underground for centuries, appear to offer these people? 
the fact is that within Christianity and within Judaism, when you think, when you imagine in your mind, when you personify deity, for most people, it's male. And there's an old uh, famous, uh, it's not that old, but there's a famous saying by Mary Daly, if God is male, the male is God. And one reason that I think people are so attracted powerfully to magic and to the pagan religions is not only to worship, uh, let's say, mama in the sky instead of papa in the sky, they want to be God. I mean, I think the fundamental thing about the magical religions and about pagan religions is that ultimately, they say, within yourself, you are the God, you are the goddess, and therefore, what is so subversive in a very powerfully beautiful way about the pagan religions is that for women they say, look, you too are God. Goddess worship is a larger concept than coven-based witchcraft, and its rituals are broader and more diverse. In Berkeley, California, the universal goddess finds a special place in a coven of feminists from which all men are excluded. Their leader is Hungarian-born Z Budapest. Z calls this Dianic witchcraft. Dianic witchcraft, in one word, is women's mysteries. That means women get together as women and devote themselves to a magical pursuit and they take care of business whatever the women in particular need. You who circle the world with your oceans, sweet mermaids, sweet nereids, who swim within you, swim in our blood, embolden us, bring us your passion, your lust for living, Another thing women's mysteries used to do is we used to judge. Women used to curse the enemies of peace and women. Women just used to have a blacklist, get out in front of the temple and tell the world that these people are bad, they should be curbed, they are warmongers and they are bad for babies. And we did this until about the fourth century when it was stopped. And when women's mysteries were stopped, women's rights stopped. Women's any kind of significance stuff. And that's when this whole silly idea came about that the Christians fed everybody that women have no souls. In women's circles, I like to have a balance of lesbians and straight ladies. Lesbians bring in the affection. There's a lot of very nice, affectionate, open nature with accustomed to be affectionate with each other type of feeling. Straight ladies are totally free. They, they do not perform for men. They can be totally themselves. So when I mix them together, it makes a very good combination. When I was a little girl, my mother used to send me to the Catholic Church, and she would tell me, baby, go ask Father Fitzpatrick for a little holy water, you know, and she'd send me with a jar. And I'd go get this holy water from the church, <clears throat> and she'd put it in the bucket with uh, sugar and urine and a little perfume, and get a picture of one of the saints and mop the floors. And the whole time she was mopping the floors, she was telling the saint what she wanted to have happening, you know, um, in her house. You know, that's what I call being a uh, Louisiana Catholic. Oh yeah, yeah, Yam Sa Hedi Hedi, mother of the winds of change, queen of the transformers, oh yeah, come dance with us, worldly woman. I was very surprised when I got my first consultation and was told that I was going to be a priestess. It took me 12 years to get initiated because, you know, I always wanted to be a movie star. <laughs> What we remember here with the craft and in the women's movement and uh, especially in the spirituality movement, the goddess movement, that they burned us systematically for about six to seven hundred years, not measly 15 years that Hitler was doing it. In the name of Christ, all denominations burned women. 
burn children. They used to spare children who were only under a year old, but the older ones they used to strip naked in the name of Jesus, drive them around the bodies of their burning parents and flagellate them on top of it so that they won't forget the lesson. Europe suffered incredibly. They wiped out whole towns. And the born-again Christians are shaking the same tree that is exactly the same sentiment they are trying to sell. It, we are in the 20th century, but they are as dangerous as they ever was. Testament Christians, a group as strongly opposed to the occult as it is possible to be. They meet each week at the Sydney home of Gary and Ruth Penhall. One aspect of their work is to cast the evil, the demons, out of people. It involves praying in tongues, a form of speech they believe to be divinely inspired by the Holy Spirit. Well, many people come to us and they're not even aware that they have demons in them. They're suffering from various kinds of hurts and uh, uh, problems. And the ministry of Jesus included the casting out of demons, so that's what we do in the name of Jesus and on his behalf as his ambassadors. He tells us in his word to do that, and it's a standard part of the Christian ministry as far as we're concerned. I would say that all people these days would have demons in them because of the very nature of the times that we live in. And the scripture tells us that the devil is really trying to get as many people to go his way as possible because these are the last days we live in and he knows that his end is very close at hand. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I renounce. I renounce. All involvement. All involvement. In the occult. In the occult. I renounce. I renounce. Palmistry. Palmistry. Hypnotism. Hypnotism. Horoscope. Horoscope. Astrology. Astrology. Fortune telling. Fortune telling. Divination. Divination. Water divining. Water divining. Pendulum. Pendulum. Witchcraft. Witchcraft. Black magic. Black magic. White magic. White magic. Incantations. Incantations. Mantras. Mantras. Charms. Charms. Fetishes. Fetishes. And ancestral superstition. And ancestral superstition. Demons hide in watery places, especially the inner fluid recesses of the human body. So in exorcism they will be spat out, or coughed free, or cried away, successfully banished in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Satan's job is to steal, kill and destroy, and for people who seek power in the occult, they find that they'll eventually be robbed, right, killed you know? and destroyed because that's what the devil's out to do. Chris, come on, sit up. Right. Sit up in that's Jesus' name. trying to take you over now. Sit up in Jesus' name. You don't want to take you over, you want it to go. <coughs> that's out, 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 out. That's right. Come on, come on. You'll come up in Jesus' name. You'll come Petra. up Petra. We're not speaking to you, we're speaking to Petra. She doesn't want to. Petra. Petra, take a breath, dear. Petra is bound by a spirit of Antichrist. That is a very powerful spirit, which is a power in the heavenlies. It required that the power be severed, the connection between this demonic power and the heavenlies be broken. Stick with us. That's right, that's good. That's good. Come on, you can open your eyes. You're, you're in control here. You're in control, that's good, dear. Come on, no trancing. There was a, a big struggle to get that spirit out. 
so strong was the spiritual battle there that we had to call in extra people to pray. the counsel of the Most High. Therefore he brought down their heart with labour. They fell down and there was none to help. They cried unto the Lord in their trouble. Oh, will you shut and up And he with that saved them out stuff. of their distresses. He brought them up out of darkness. It was very difficult to keep in touch with the real Petra. She would often trance out and one would find these demonic spirits speaking through her mouth arguing and uh, he cursing and healed them he what sent his word and healed them with? jesus sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions we come against you you mocking spirit you stubborn spirit and we command you to come out now in the name of jesus petra just take a deep breath dear deep breath petra deep breath what do petra you not talking petra? to you I'm talking what to petra i want to talk to petra petra you petra. just said you were going to petra. read it to me what do petra. you cut it with petra in jesus name cut it with the blood of jesus Oh. the blood of Jesus. Out right. you come now. Chris is receiving a second ministry today and we've come up against the Antichrist spirit and the spirit of rebellion which is a strong man in his life. Something that he took on himself through being involved with a bikey group. He said that he would serve Satan and not God. Come out. Come on, come out. Yeah, come out. Don't bind his mind. Don't bind his mind. You're forbidden in the name of Jesus. Now, you get your hands off this lot. Now, the blood of Jesus is going to drive you out to dry places. Every bit. Amen. Coming up now. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Chris, help it. Push it. Push it up. Come on. You don't want it. You don't want it. Come on. Up you come. 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 In Jesus' name. You know, it wasn't until I was about 14, 15 that I really started getting with the devil. The devil just said, look, you're safe with me. No one can hurt you. Come on, lying spirit, lying Petra. spirit. Petra, 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 that's a good girl. You're doing Open well, your eyes. Petra. The devil was speaking to me in my mind. Yeah, it wasn't a great big loud booming voice saying, I'll do this. Yeah, it was in my mind, it was just saying, if you stick with me, I can get you money, I can get you anything you want. So I thought, well, I might as well do this. The spirit of Antichrist, leave her right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I believe that the spirit of Antichrist was in me, was trying to dictate what I was doing, trying to control my life and trying to make me so scared that I renounce Christianity and go back to the devil, which I wasn't prepared to do. We bind you the power. We bind you in Jesus' name. We bind you in Jesus' name. That's good. That's good. Three Yes, that's the way. That's the way. Yes, that's the way. Out it goes. Out it goes. That's right. Unhook her. Unhook her. Yes, unhook her. Come out in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come out. Oh, yes. By the power of blood of Jesus. Come out. By the power of blood of Jesus. Come out in Jesus' name. Blood of Jesus. Did you hear that? That's good. Petra. Come out. 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 Come out.
peace upon our sister now, Lord, just fill all those empty spaces. Father God, just replace that strength of the enemy with your peace and your gentleness. The reason that Christians are frightened of witchcraft is one, history is always written by the winners and Christianity won and paganism lost. And two, people are afraid of the unknown and they're particularly afraid of the deepest parts of themselves. They're afraid of their dreams, they're afraid of their deepest desires. And witchcraft and magic is uh, an art, if you will, or a science, if you will, that deals with trying to delve into the deepest places of our souls, the places where the creative power is, the places where the dreams are, the places where all the things that we have to deal with if we want to become whole, human, adult, deep human beings. And most people are afraid of that. And that's, I think, why way down deep they're afraid of witchcraft. It may come as no surprise that in the land of leprechauns, elves, and fairies, there is also a place for goddess worship. Clonagall Castle in Ireland, built in 1625 on a site where ancient druids used to gather. Since 1780, it's been the ancestral home of the Durdin Robertson family. Lawrence, the 21st Baron of Strathlock, became so deeply interested in the occult that in 1976, he and his sister, Lady Olivia, founded the Fellowship of Isis. The Fellowship of Isis is a multi-religious, multi-racial, multicultural society. That's why we have Catholic priests, nuns, Hindus, witches, spiritualists, walking around on a Sunday and drinking well water in our temple and lighting candles because we've no uh, specific dogma that divides people. We find one point in common with all religions, the feminine, which we feel needs emphasizing now really to save our planet from world destruction with our arms race and pollution. Baron Robertson was once an Anglican minister until one day in 1966, uh, I had, well, we could just call it a revelation or the insight that the feminine aspect of deity was all important, or in other words, that God was feminine or female. And from then on, 
um, a great many things change, particularly the, the uh, theology. The Fellowship of Isis dedicates itself to worshipping the goddess in all religions, wherever she is found. There are now over 5,000 members in 53 countries. Some of them travel to Clonagall Castle for ordination. We hope to achieve harmony among all peoples and all animals, trees and plants without these terrible divisions, doctrinal and political or anyway, but to achieve harmony with spirits. Isn't it silly that you're loved by your family on a Monday when you're so-called alive? When you enter spirit world on Wednesday and pop in to see people, they scream and call you a ghost. The procession of the candidates proceed right down into the ancient part of the castle till they reach the old dungeon. I think it's quite exciting, it, it's dramatic. Candidates for ordination, are you willing to face the ordeal of entering the dungeon and seeing the dark earth mother of all beings, the Morrigan? I dare. I dare. You may enter. Morrigan, mother of the dark earth and all the creatures therein. Do you fear me? No, I accept thee with love. No, I honor thee with wisdom. I am Ishtar, goddess of the stars. Take my blessing. The temple is a halfway house between the other world and this. When I get people into group meditation at our eight yearly festivals, I say, let us now shut our eyes and find ourselves in Tiananmen. Well, the temple is halfway to spirit world. I must tell you a funny story. You know the Tinkers in Ireland, the traveling people? Well, they like coming here, you know. One of them took the earrings off one of our statues and put it down solemnly in front of the lady, you know. And the lady came up to me and says, Hey, Mum, she says, where's the magic carpet? I said, magic carpet? She said, oh, you have a magic carpet, a great carpet here. So the people all sit in it and they go off on a grand journey. I didn't know what she meant. Then I remember that at our ceremonies, we say, here is a carpet, please sit in it and we will go to ancient Egypt or wherever. And people come back and they give reports of astral experiences. And this reached the Dublin tinkers, and that's what we did. It's a jolly good description. Maybe that's what the Moors meant by their magic carpets. May the priestesses invoke deity. I invoke the goddess Isis and the goddess Cyrus. May wisdom and joy prevail. I invoke the goddess Anya and the god Luch. May plenty be reigned upon the land of Ireland. We had one very interesting long distance ordination from Atlanta, Georgia. And we had the telephone amplified. But typical in our family, my nephew had forgotten to pay the bill. So we got cut off the day before. There was frantic shenanigans trying. They wouldn't put it on until we knew the exact amount that was owed. And it just came on about half an hour beforehand. And we had a wonderful ceremony, we in full robes, and they in Georgia. And we heard every word they said quite clearly. A lovely lady, Lady Morgan Le Fay. May the candidates step forward. Do you wish to be ordained as priestesses of the goddess? I do. I do. Which goddess do you choose to follow? I choose the goddess Selene. I choose the goddess Isis. With this holy oil, I ordain you both priestesses. 
With these crowns, I dignify thy head. The head center gives the halo. With this stole, the silver of the moon goddess Selene, whom you follow, I hallow thy heart. And this pure white of Isis brings you joy. With this magical wand, I strengthen thy will for good. With this fine staff, I strengthen thy magical powers. In the name of the goddess Selene and of the goddess Isis, I declare you both priestesses of the Fellowship of Isis. In the name of the priesthood of the great goddesses of the Pantheons, I accept these ordinations. Dear daughters of the goddess, reflect your mother's glory and give forth your first blessing. As priestess of Selene, I call down blessings on all present here. As priestess of Isis, I bless all here with health and peace. Practitioners of the occult often look back to early tribal religions for their inspiration. Here they find the shaman. Javanese shamans possessed by the spirit of a horse. Mystics capable of magical journeys, attaining an altered state of consciousness. Enveloped in a trance-like state. Immune to pain. Insensitive to hurt. Unscathed even by rolling in broken glass. Shamans undertake a journey of the spirit, but should these occult experiences remain exclusive to the tribes? The veil is being lifted off of many of the traditions that have kept the teachings a secret. And I think that the lineage holders, both from uh, the, of the Aboriginal peoples and of old high culture, these lineage holders recognize the simple fact that it is no longer appropriate to have secret teachings, that it's extremely important to make teachings available to all people. An anthropologist working in New York is among the scientists making shamanism accessible to the West. Variously a visiting professor at Yale, Berkeley and Columbia universities, Dr. Michael Harner also has the unique advantage of having been personally initiated by South American Indians. He leads his students into a trance-like state from which the inner journey of the shaman can begin. To journey into what is called the upper world or the lower world, and making these journeys with a particular purpose, the person is able to get information to puzzling questions, knowledge that normally only comes rarely to other people. This is the dream time of the Australian Aboriginals. This is the mythic time of the shaman, outside of time. Realms that are normally reserved for those approaching death or for saints. I think we're entering something which surprisingly is universal regardless of culture. Certainly people are influenced by their own history, their own cultural history, the individual history. But we're beginning to discover a map of the upper world, of the lower world, regardless of culture. The drum beat is something like a carrier wave that carries the shaman along in the journey to the upper world or the lower world. 
It excludes external stimuli of ordinary reality. It focuses the mind in a certain way. So with the drum, one is able to enter realms that other people may strive for years through silent meditation to achieve. I went down a couple of levels and then went even further to some area that was very gray and slimy and foggy. And I walked through that for a while and found another opening and went down even further. It was some place I'd never been before. And it was kind of like a cave. And there were some beings in there, but I couldn't quite make out what they were. And I was just kind of sitting there with them. And all of a sudden, they came at me with knives and tore me apart into all these pieces and tore my flesh off. And I was startled, but it didn't hurt. I made a, a journey to the upper world and I visited my teacher. She took me up through her vagina, actually took me into her and took me into her belly. I could feel her, feel her get pregnant with me and felt her belly stretching. I felt myself inside her. I also felt her put, put her hands on top of the, her belly and, and how large, large it was. Uh, she told me that I should stop breathing, that I should take nourishment from her and I could actually feel myself stop breathing. I felt a lot of warmth in my belly as if it was coming into me. And uh, she then stretched further and actually broke apart. Her belly broke apart and I came out of her. And I took it to mean that I, I needed to use less will in, in my work, that, that uh, I needed to trust her more and let that enter into my daily life. In this spirit canoe, uh, the people are organized in the outline of a boat, and in the center is the patient and the shaman. Together, the whole group is journeying down into the lower world, helping the shaman search for the lost power animal, that is, the guardian animal, and catching and obtaining that power and bringing it back. And then the patient is asked to dance the animal, to greet it, to make it welcome, to help the patient's health. few scientific studies so far on what happens to a shaman making the journey. But in one research project that was done, it was found that the shaman in just 10 minutes of journeying achieved a stage of consciousness uh, that had only been duplicated once before, and that was by Japanese Zen masters in deep meditation after six hours of work. Things like music and dance are helpful for getting into altered states because they get around the barrier that ordinary consciousness poses. If I had to characterize the main thing about our ordinary state of mind, I'd say it's verbal. Ordinary consciousness is a matter of thinking, talking to yourself constantly. It's think, 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 remember, think, plan, fantasy, remember, think, 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 think. And all those words form a barrier to sensing other aspects of mental functioning. The challenging coastline south of San Francisco provides a perfect setting against which to probe altered states of consciousness. For more than 20 years, people have been coming to the Esalen Institute to explore the deeper regions of the mind. One is Dr. Stanislav Groff, who leads subjects into an altered state of consciousness with recorded music and the special breathing technique he has perfected. Fully experiencing them. Trust that your psyche and your body know how to heal themselves. Then we start with relaxation. If you have a technique that works for you, feel free to use that. 
for the rest of you, since we have the privilege here by, uh, of, of being by the ocean, you might use the waves as a kind of relaxing element. Imagine in your mind's eye. Part of your body, as you go through them, try to relax them as much as you can. For each person undergoing the experience, there is a watcher, a guide, in case there is need of help. Many will have a unique experience, perhaps birth relived, or fear confronted, or a mystical state achieved. Trusting your own process without analyzing it. If you breathe like this, you, your cortex gets a little less oxygen. You would be in a state like in the high mountains. By exhaling carbon dioxide, you change the uh, acidity, alkalinity index of the blood so that less of oxygen will be transmitted to your tissues. It actually creates a kind of uh, inhibiting, uh, hypnotic effect. I basically went back into my childhood and um, experienced me as, um, I think, a pretty, uh, fairly little baby. <laughs> I felt very unhappy. I just was crying and I basically wanted to be very close to my mother. And then, after some time breathing more heavy, I um, switched to another image, I guess. That took me back, um, I think it was Stone Age. I saw uh, myself laying in a, in a co not coffin, but um, on a podest somewhere, all about ready to die. And that was not frightening at all. It was actually a very warm and positive feeling. My first sensation when I started to breathe was one of a uh, slight feeling of tingling in my hands, in my legs. I was in a very pleasant spot, felt sensuous and uh, the music was rhythmical, and I enjoyed it, and moving to it. And then, after about 20 minutes into there, my whole body tensed. My fingers, I couldn't move them. They were cramped. I experienced the feeling of pain and terror. And by stopping breathing at the same rate, I was able to retreat from that. I did not care to go there. At the end of my breathing, I felt peaceful, euphoric, delighted I had done it.
there were many different body impressions, like having the sensation of, of cold, very cold in my hands, after very tense, and uh, basically, like, they want to take me, they're going to take me and they're going to kill me. I felt like a lion, the very big cat, and I felt very bad myself, I kind of evil. Powerful, really, really powerful. Powerful, eh? It's very impressive uh, how such a simple tool as breathing can uh, gain access to these really deep layers of the psyche. What I did with Carlos was really a reaction to the clues that he gave me. This is a basic principle in this work is always follow the energetic clues. You work on the area which seems to be blocked energetically. So I asked him to accentuate uh, the tension here and then I put a lot of resistance so he could really channel these pent up energies and free that whole area. After 20 minutes of breathing, uh, the sort of uh, thin layer of civilization peels off and you see practically the same phenomena that uh, we witness in anthropological movies from so-called primitive cultures or that have been described in, in various ancient uh, contexts. There are always some people in a group who actually, the more they breathe, the more they relax, they just go into a, a peaceful, expanded state. They would be having actually elements of mystical consciousness. Ideally, the person should end up in a totally relaxed, peaceful state. It's a very powerful, stress-reducing technique. If the anguish and trauma in the human mind can be overcome through an altered state of consciousness, perhaps psychologists are only now beginning to discover what occult mystics may have known all along. in the vocabulary of 20th century men. How do you banish these dark images from the soul? Some do it through art. H.R. Giger is the creator of the alien and perhaps the greatest occult artist of his time. At his studio in Switzerland, he releases the darkness within himself by transforming it into something which all the world can see. The ideas, they come sometimes from dreams or from, um, from bad things. And uh, I go to realize it and then I work it out. It's like a kind of exorcism. Mostly people look at my paintings for the first time. They are a little bit uh, disturbed and they think that I'm completely crazy. Images in my paintings are evil, but you can't say that I'm evil. That's just... Uh, the paradise for me, it's the hell. I like women very much, uh, but I'm afraid of sometimes. I'm afraid about suffering. 
Women make me often suffering so much that I stopped and maybe I work it out on, on the painting. There are plenty of sex symbols and the death is in my painting so much and so often that I, uh, I can't see it. And sometimes if it's too heavy, my mother tell me, please go to change this a little bit because she feels shame about her son. And I feel shame because she feels and so I go to change. With my art, I just want to survive. of Yanchep, Western Australia. Darkness transformed into light. An occult group gathers to perform an ancient Egyptian rite. The members of the Temple of the Mother worship the goddess Isis. Their leader is an energetic businesswoman who by night becomes the High Priestess, Levana. My rituals and teachings were passed down to me by my Egyptian teacher, who I first met in Egypt seven years ago. Our first time we met, we spent many, many days in the desert together. He taught me a complete new system to me at the time, although as he spoke and talked to me, I realized it was a system that I had within myself. He awakened my ancient self. There was something about him that was very, very important to me in this life. I knew he was going to guide me, give me the reasons and directions in my life. His teachings came more of a vibration and a feeling from within him. Sometimes we would spend many, many hours in the desert and not one word would pass. It was almost like clairvoyant pictures before my eyes an unveiling of knowledge, of knowing. And most of my teachings with him were this way. Our full moon ritual begins at new moon and everybody within the temple starts their preparation and aligning themselves to the new moon and her energies, to her waxing energies, to her growth. We use our netta as an expression of our openness and our love to the god or the goddess or to life. So in a way we're paying homage to ourselves as well. Aset, 
Magic feeds me. Magic makes me constantly aware of change, and I can make change. Magic gives me vitality. Magic's a very positive thing because it's an affirmation every day. I am, I can, I will. Sisum Sinanshu. Him Oh, you great shining ones. Guardians of fire. We welcome you. Aneta. Aneta. Aneta Rak. Atom. What I get from magic and working with the Temple of the Mother and Lavana is to realize the joyousness of life, that life's free flowing and that life's a very, very precious thing. We get that also from working with uh, children and healing, but we could also get it from the rituals and the dancing to realize the preciousness of the moment. And really your life is just a process of moments. So if we can realize the preciousness of the moment and then extend that into our whole life, our whole life can become joyous and free flowing. As I stand there, and I'm taking on the form of the Great Mother, I, I actually do feel like I am the Great Mother. I don't necessarily feel like I'm a person. I actually feel like I'm Earth, I'm Sea, I'm everything that's feminine. And the priest and priestesses before me, as I look into their eyes and they look into my eyes, there's this most incredible openness that one can't have in a mundane world. Heal Isis. Heal Isis. Heal Isis. Heal Isis. I think that uh, humanity is already enlightened, it just has to become aware of it. So the process is to unfold um, the inner spiritual truths, not to create them. Man is not born imperfect. Um, he has to realize his own divinity. And in realizing his own divinity, he will free himself. If it were only facts that mattered, man now knows more about himself than he has ever known, and yet somehow he believes in himself less. There is a gap between what we know and what we feel. Many find that the occult can bridge that gap. It can take us beyond ourselves, to the infinite. It gives the gift of joy unto the hearts of men. Isis, 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 Isis,